one down, one to go. I always told my team, you know, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Let me show you guys a few things on paper real quick. On the IF transformer for the Airline 62306 that I think you'll find interesting. As you can see here, T3 IF transformer is the one that I tackled first. Both IFs again are at 465 kilocycles or kilohertz. After taking it apart, you'll see that at the conclusion of the video, they're air coil design. And here's my uh, documentation just for future reference or should someone be doing a, a repair on a similar model that uses the same IF transformers. Hopefully, you'll find this helpful. You got the primary here on the left side and you can see I have the DC resistance called out as well as the inductance at uh, just over one uh, mellow Henry. And I took time to uh, go ahead and put new lead dressings on and I have all those uh, based on the uh, RMA specification, Radio Manufacturers Association. So. Uh, they're uh, recoded now, blue for the plate, which will uh, tie back to the uh, 6 alpha 8 and the uh, B plus here being red on the primary side. And of course you guys saw that uh, green lead for the uh, grid as well for the 6K7. It was in bad shape. And uh, one thing to note there you'll see in the uh, video, I took time to uh, reproduce another grid cap if you're uh, interested in seeing that, I'll cover that in just a moment. Turned out uh, pretty well. Secondary, 23.9 ohms and uh, just north of 1 millihenry as well. And uh, you can see the uh, black lead here. It's your grid return or ABC side on the secondary side. I also did this drawing just for my reference because it's not on the schematic, just to show the orientation of what's uh, primary, what's secondary in relationship to the uh, top side of the uh, can. Now, I did not take time to disconnect the lead wires from the inductor itself. Just didn't want to take any chances of doing any damage or come up short on the uh, magnet wire that was used. So, if you reverse engineer the inductance value here, I come up with, uh, let's see, 113 picofarads here. So roughly just north of 100 uh, picofarads to make the uh, coils themselves, primary, secondary, resonate at uh, 465 uh, kilocycles or kilohertz. Now what I did next was hook up the uh, signal generator to the uh, primary side here. And you can see I went across the uh, green and black and then I had my O-scope hooked to the uh, blue and red leads and adjusted the uh, primary for uh, peak amplitude to resonate again at 465 kilocycles. Repeating that for the secondary here. Had the signal generator on the blue-red and the O-scope attached to the green-black. Same thing, went back and looked at the uh, 465 and adjusted the uh, trimmers here accordingly. Then I just repeated that just to make sure I was maxed out. For folks out there watching for the first time, you'll see I've got a, a graph here and it shows basically the uh, response curve, or what I would call the frequency response of the IF transformer. And I don't have a, a sweep generator hooked up. I uh, did this manually, and I'll uh, show you the steps here. So if you've got an oscilloscope, a signal generator, or just a frequency counter, a, a multimeter with a high input impedance, and I'll show you a little circuit you can hook up. You can make these measurements and graph this out. So this is old school, but uh, that's what makes the uh, hobby fun. Let's skip this just for a moment. We'll come back and look at it. Let me show you the numerical data that I captured 
and then we'll refer back here to the uh, graph itself. You guys saw how I hooked up the uh, signal generator and then I used my uh, O-scope and I was looking at everything in millivolts. With the uh, IF transformer peaked at 465 kilocycles or kilohertz, I set my signal generator to read 1 volt or 1000 millivolts. And then you can see here I've got my uh, decibel points down, negative 3, 6, 9, all the way through negative 20. So just rocking the uh, signal generator back and forth, I'll start over here with F2, looking at the uh, lowest frequency for an amplitude of 707 millivolts, which is the negative 3 location, and uh, we'll expand on that in just a moment. And you can see here I have the uh, frequency called out for all the various voltage readings here in this column. Same thing for F1. Uh, you can see that called out as well, and that's your higher side. And again, all these run all the way through negative 20 down to 100 millivolts. Let's go back to the graph now and reference that. I could have dumped this into Excel in a matter of moments and uh, graphed this out and had a really pretty chart. But uh, it's always fun kind of going back and doing things on paper and uh, remembering the steps to do so using uh, some graph paper here. So all the numerical data that I captured is represented here. So you can see at the bottom side here, I've got my uh, frequency itself with the center frequency noted, the higher frequency here, and the lower frequency. So everything's to scale. And then I just went in and put the dots in for all the numerical data for the F2 data, and did the same thing here for the F1 da uh, data on the uh, high side. So with all that, it creates a nice curve, and it kind of shows me what the IF filter or IF transformer frequency response would look like without a sweep generator. Now you notice I've got a few things uh, called out over here. If you go back and reference this side here, you'll see the center frequency 465, and then I've got my negative 3 dB down points and they're called out here at this location and this location and uh, that's what we're really going to measure to see what the bandwidth is across this point point. and typically you'd want to see less than uh, 10 kilocycles of course if it was wider than that you're going to be into your next station on the AM band so, you know, somewhere between 6 and 8 would be probably ideal, but for an old vintage radio with uh, IF transformers uh, from this period, anything under uh, 10 kilohertz or 10 kilocycles would be my objective. With this known data, you can see I can go here and actually calculate the bandwidth. I can actually just subtract um, F1 minus F2 or if I know the Q, which I'll jump back to in a minute, I can do the bandwidth by frequency divided by the Q or the uh, quality factor of the uh, transformer itself. Now to calculate the uh, quality factor or the Q of the coil, you just take the uh, center frequency 465, divide that by F1 minus F2, and the uh, Q would be an approximate 52 and some change. Again, this is not in the circuit. There's no loading placed on the uh, transformer, so I'm sure that changes once everything's in circuit, but this is just a really good you know, test to do out of circuit. So what I see based on this, the uh, IF transformer is healthy, and it should uh, work really well. You can see the uh, bandwidth is uh, calculated at 8.9 kilocycles or kilohertz. So uh, not bad for an old uh, vintage transformer. 
I thought I'd share that with you. You can see down the right hand side here I've got the uh, percent of voltage uh, called out as well and how it, can, it corresponds over here to the uh, left side for uh, decibels down. Many folks have uh, replaced or rebuilt fabricated replacement uh, grid caps. So what I'm sharing is nothing new but uh, just simply uh, you know, a piece of metal, brass, whatever you choose to use. And you can see the uh, dimensions that I chose here. Uh, one inch is this way, a quarter of an inch this way, a quarter of an inch wide here, and then I'm coming back here kind of to a bevel point. I drilled a small hole for my uh, conductor to solder back to. Now I used a, a nickel silver sheet, 24 gauge. I think next time I'm going to try a 26. 26 may be just a little soft. Uh, 24 might just be the uh, perfect gauge to use, but uh, I'm going to play around with some 26 next time an opportunity presents itself. And I used a, a 1 4 inch drill bit shank to uh, form the uh, quarter inch diameter that I needed to fit over the top of the uh, grid of the tube since that's the uh, diameter needed. You guys saw the uh, up close photo there that I just showed in the picture in picture and there's some additional photos at the end of the video if you're uh, interested. So simple and easy to build probably took maybe five to ten minutes or so to uh, put it together. Just wanted to share that just in case you have a uh, need to uh, reproduce one. We, uh, go ahead and get started on the uh, second IF filter and repeat the uh, process. And again, if you're interested, there's some still photos here at the end with a uh, little music playing in the background. You can see the uh, up close picture of the IF transformer as I was uh, breaking things apart and uh, rebuilding it. Thanks for watching, folks.